This week I am going to talk out of uh, Psalm 23. Uh, one of the most fundamental things about life is that uh, as we follow God, we can always trust in God for the next step and being with us in that step and that he is actually our source of, of life in that step. Um, it's actually funny, I was talking to Devon uh, a few weeks ago about the pastoral gift and uh, the word pastor actually only appears in my Bible once, surprisingly, in Ephesians 4 where uh, Paul is writing about the five ministries that God gives to the church but the word that's translated as pastor there does appear in lots of places in the New Testament come on John you're, you're a scholar What's in, do you know what it's normally translated as? no that's how it is often translated as it's, it's shepherd it's not, and just not like kind of church shepherd just normal everyday shepherd um, and so the Lord is my shepherd and ultimately the goal for anybody with a pastoral <coughs> gift is to have people connect with God and know the shepherding of God in their lives um, so Psalm 23 we'll, we'll read it in a second all the way through and then, and then break it down but it, it travels through a landscape as you read it and I think it helps us to picture the landscape as you read it this is, this is not Israel, this is where me and Nicky went on holiday a couple of weeks ago on our Tesco vouchers, which is very nice. Now this is Lake Vaughan Way in Wales. Uh, so let me read out Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. I like nothing. There's a profound expression of our identity in God and our dependence on God. I know who I am in God. I am his sheep and he is my shepherd. He is the source of my identity. He's the source of my worth. I matter because I matter to God. I'm his and I follow him. And that dependency on God, recognising that dependency on God is a, is a good thing. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. I am not my own source of life. I am not self-sufficient. Nor am I the source of life for anybody else. He's also my shepherd. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. I know him. It's personal. And I lack nothing. And that's an interesting thing to say. I lack nothing. When you think that Jesus died with nothing but a loincloth and the knowledge that he was doing his Father's will. In life, we trust that the shepherd knows what he's doing. Paul said, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I lack nothing because God is my shepherd. Now, I'm going to do an experiment today. I don't often do this, but I thought it'd be good to put some truth 
on our lips because there's something faith building about actually verbalising truth. So, uh, I'm going to please repeat after me. It's going to be okay because the Lord is my shepherd. It's going to be okay because the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. God knows we've got an emotional tank. And that sometimes it gets a bit low and we need to be refreshed. We need to be recharged. And ultimately, it's God who refreshes our soul. Caffeine will only get you so far Watching a, a, a funny movie will only get you so far. It's God who refreshes our soul. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And peace isn't just the absence of conflict. It's like deep down, it is wow with my soul. It's a peace that's beyond understanding. So please say after me, God is the one who refreshes my soul. God is the one who refreshes my soul. Is this okay or is this too weird? I can't count you in. <laughs> right, okay. I'll do that next time. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. God doesn't just guide me in the peaceful places. He also guides me along right paths, doing the right things. And it's for God's name's sake. When Christians are are hypocritical or church leaders commit adultery or there's some scandal in the church, whose reputation is ultimately damaged in the long run? It's, It's God's. People forget the names of the minister who, well off, who went off the rails and things like that. But God gets it in his reputation. And how does that help when God wants everybody to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth? Our behaviour, our rightness matters for us and it matters for God and it matters for others. Say, God wants me to do what's right. Three, two, one. God wants me to do what's right. Was that too fast? Was that alright? Okay. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Uh, This month is November which is an opportunity for guys to grow ridiculous moustaches. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to go for it or not. Nikki's shaking her head. Maybe that means I will. (laughs) But it's also an opportunity to talk about male health issues. So, here's a question. What is the leading cause of death in males between 5 and 49? Does anyone know? It's, it's not a big C, it's not cancer, it's suicide. So here's, here's the data, this, is, this isn't America or something like this, this is the UK 2017. Uh, so the column on the left is the commonest cause of death. This is in males, 5 to 19, 20 to 34, 35 to 49. I just, I just, I blew my mind when I discovered this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not just that people get depressed and think about it. People are people are doing it. Just to be fair, he knows what the leading cause of death is in females aged five to thirty-four. Suicide again. I just, honestly, it blows my mind. It's healthy to recognise 
but sometimes we walk through dark valleys. I didn't plan this. This morning in church, I was at the front with tears in my eyes, being prayed for and just opening up a bit uh, about some, some downness that I've been going through. It's healthy for us to open up and talk about it when we're in a dark valley. There's a great worship song that starts off, It's okay to not be okay. This is a safe place. It's okay to not be okay. It's healthy for us to say, do you know I've been struggling lately? And to not bottle that up? God knows, right? This is, this is in the song, Psalm 23. You know, the Christian life isn't supposed to be wonderful all the time. It can't be wonderful all the time because we're living in a real world with real problems. And God knows that sometimes we're in a dark valley. He's, that's not a surprise to God. It's healthy for us to, to talk about that and also to hold on to a hope. Because every valley has an end. We're not alone in the valley. The dark times are the times when we need to trust in God the most. And that's where he's with us the most. And the things we learn in the valleys are often the things which are most precious and the things which stick with us. It also says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is a God with a rod and a staff. At board games club, we call that dual wielding. <laughs> See, the shepherd would have given any predators coming close to the sheep a big swipe of everything he'd got. When David went to find Goliath, he said, when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, and I struck it and rescued the sheep from, the mouth, from its mouth. Goliath would just be like one of them. That's why the shepherd's rod and staff comfort the sheep in the dark valley, because the shepherd can keep us safe. Now, I really wanted to find a picture of, of God as a kick-ass shepherd. <laughs> Dual wing, a rod and a staff, and protecting the sheep. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't find any. I did find Legolas with, 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 with kind of two weapons, uh, and then I got into paint, and I, I changed it into a rod and a staff as best I could. And then I thought, well, they might not realise this is meant to be God, so I gave him a halo as well. <laughs> God is on our side, and not just in some hypothetical way, God is our protector in the dark valleys. To put it another way, Paul said to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. God is not expecting us to be strong in ourselves. In the valley we trust in God and remind ourselves that the valley isn't the end of the story. Say, God is with me at all times. Three, two, one. God is with me at all times. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Another song we used to sing is you brought me to your banqueting table. Your banner over me is love. And as I'm picturing this psalm and walking through the landscapes, this is after we've come out of a valley and we're on a hill. And it's sunny at the top of the hill. And God has prepared this banqueting table. And not only that, there's a force field around the hill. So the enemies can't get there. All they can do is, is watch. Whilst God lavishes his love on us. God doesn't always remove our enemies, sometimes he just lavishes, lavishes his love on us in the midst of them and teaches us to live victoriously in the midst of them. God has a bank before us, but God also wants to anoint us. And it's a funny thing, I, I, I had never realised this until I read this recently. You anoint priests and kings in order to prepare them 
the service and yet this is at the end of the song God anoints us in order to prepare us and there are always new challenges around the corner new things for God anoint, God's anointing to carry us into and help us to, to carry him into see the anointing was something you then carried and I guess the oil smelled a bit because of how they made it and you were almost metaphorically carrying the presence of God with you what counts and what carries us is knowing that the Lord is my shepherd and that he is with us say God's banner over me is love 3, 2, 1 Amen. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is our ultimate hope in some ways. Because of God, it is inevitable. Surely in this life we have God's goodness and love, and surely forever we will come home to God. After all the landscape we walk through, we have a destination which is a house, a place of fellowship, a place of security, a place of rest, a place of belonging. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many rooms and I go there to prepare a room for you. Say, Jesus has prepared a room for me in my Father's house. Is it tea time? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus prepared a room for me in my father's house. Three, two, one. Jesus prepared a room for me in my father's house. That was a long one, wasn't it? I yeah. could see you struggling to remember that. Don't get longer. <laughs> That's it. I, 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 that was pretty much my last point. Except I thought it'd be good for us to just stop for a while, maybe get into two groups so these are, these are some of the things that that psalm talks about it talks about our identity in God it talks about God refreshing us it talks about God leading us into rightness it talks about God helping us in the valley and in darkness it talks about God anointing us for the next step and it talks about our hope for the future what is happening in your life are you needing any of these things and then let's pray for one another because God is the shepherd who provides all these things.